tell them all, all praises to Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai brought the thumb to the hope of the elect. Just out here through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, another day, another week in, week out, Lord's will to prophesy the downfall and the destruction of this wicked kingdom known as Babylon the Great, aka America. All right. Um, today is June 2nd, the year 2022, the year of the turn up. And according to, you know, uh, everything that's been going on, um, it looks to be exactly that, man. It, it appears that, hey, most of all, this could be the year that Yahweh Shemal Shai actually turns up out here, man. You know, because to the saints, which are Israelites, all right, and more, even more so to the elect, because at the end of the day, this message is only for the elect, all right? Because two-thirds of so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, the way that the Lord set this program up, um, you know, part of the Lord's will, he set it up to where two-thirds, they wouldn't get it, all right? They wouldn't, they wouldn't come to this understanding. And we clearly see that, you know, because as, as clear as day, as obvious, as evident as it is, to those of us in the know, the hopefully elect, you know, um, again, two thirds of our people, they just don't get it. They, they don't see, you know, and again, because part of this, this gospel is understanding the will of the Lord. All right. And again, part of the, part of the Lord's will, like I said, two thirds, they wouldn't get it. I'm going to get this real quick. And Isaiah Isaiah chapter 6 Isaiah chapter 6 I'll Start of verse 9 it says And he said go and tell this people Hear ye indeed but understand not And see ye indeed but perceive not Make the heart of this people fat And make their ears heavy And shut their eyes Lest they see with their eyes And hear with their ears And understand with their heart and convert and be healed because again part of the Lord's will two thirds the Lord set it up to where they won't be able to see like I said as clear as day as ob obvious as evident as it is to us to hopefully elect alright two thirds they can't see even though the prophets are out there in the highways and byways alright and this message has been going out you know Two thirds, they can't hear, they can't see, they can't hear, they can't understand it, they can't get it, because they're um, the way for them to receive this understanding has been blocked by Yahweh Shai. Because again, this is all the will of the Heavenly Father at the end of the day. So He set it up to where two thirds they won't be able to get it. Because Amen, all hell is getting ready to break loose out here. All hell is getting ready to break loose out here. You see, and while Jake is still playing around, playing games. This is why it tells you in second Ezra do death by pain. Two thirds, they have to find it out. They're going to get it eventually. They'll get it eventually. All right. But again, they have to figure it out. They have to get it through death by pain. And this is what, again, we're coming into this time where Yahweh Shema was shy. He's getting ready to bring extreme misery on this earth and even more so here in America, Babylon the Great. All right. It's crunch time, man. You know? And you how about Shemal Shai? Hey, he's he he's he's getting ready to show out, man. The Lord is getting ready to show out. Alright. Reading on verse eleven it says, Then said I, Lord, how long? Alright, so pretty much the the answer being the, the question being asked, how long is it gonna be? To where two thirds they can't see, they can't get this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. They, how how long, you know, for for two thirds of our people that they can't get it, right? Because again, eventually they're going to get it, eventually. But again, they have to learn through death by pain. So eventually they're going to get it. It says, and they and he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly destroyed. Because you see, two thirds of our people, they have to get it. They're, they're going to get it, but they're going to get it on the other side. You see? Because when two-thirds of our people, when they die on this side, it's not the end-all, be-all. 
You see, there's no there's no such thing as hell where your spirit is 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 you know burning for all of eternity. You know, when you really dig into the scriptures, going into that man, it, it, that that doesn't make any, that doesn't make any sense, right? It, it it just doesn't make sense. You see, so two thirds when they die on this side, they're gonna come back to the loins of the elect, and that's when they'll get it. All right, that's when they'll get it. Cause like I said, eventually they'll get it, eventually. But they have to learn through death by pain. And again, we're coming into that time where Yahweh Shemuel Shai is getting ready to bring that 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 pain. He's getting ready to bring that misery. The Lord is he he's visiting this earth. If it's not obvious already, the Lord is visiting this earth, man. All right. But by the time two thirds get it, it'll be too late. It's going to be too late for him. You see. I'm going to read that again. It says, Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly destroyed. All right? Because those ICBM missiles, um, you know, they're going to completely wipe out this whole landmass known as America. America is going to be turned into one big giant desert, and it's never going to be inhabited by mankind ever again. You see, but by the time those missiles get, by the time those missiles hit ground zero, more specifically here in America, again, that's when Jake, that, that's when they're going to understand. That's, that's when they're going to get it. When Jacob's trouble hits, right? Because, hey, scriptures talk about how, you know, pretty much when it's all said and done, um, the scriptures say how this shall they know a prophet had been among them, you see? Because two thirds of our people right now, they look at us, they look at us as the ops, man. You know, they look at us as the enemy. When all we're trying to do is is, is warn our people and let you know, let you know of the oncoming danger that's getting ready to take place. You see, but because Jake, Jake, man, they they have a very a very, uh, uh, being that Saint John eight and forty four. Two thirds of our people, they have the spirit of Esau Edom on them. You see? And our people, they have a very weak, dumbed down, docile type spirit on them, which is the spirit of Esau. So, with that being said, Jake, they want to be told soothing things. They want to be told smooth words. They want to be told things that's going to make them feel good. All right? Jake wants to be told that we're going to bounce back from this so called demic and we're going to get back to normal. Well, hey, the prophets. The men of the Lord, that's not, hey, that's not in the will of the Heavenly Father. That's not his plans. As a matter of fact, and this is why, for the most part, throughout time, you know, the prophets pretty much were always looked at as enemies because of the message that they, they that, you know, the message that they had to, to, the, the, to present from Yahweh Bashim Abba Shai. All right? So Jeremiah 28, Jeremiah 28, starting at, starting at verse 7, nevertheless, hear thou, hear thou now this word that I speak in thine ears and in the ears of all the people. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesy both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. The prophet which prophesied of peace. When the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord hath truly sent him. You see? So again, I'm going to read it again. Verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. You see? And again, Start with the apostles of great millstone who are the true leaders of the nation of Israel through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shema Shai, working all the way on, on, on you know down to, to you know brothers that speak the like minded doctrines such as myself. Hey, anyway, again, we're not here to teach you peace, man. Peace is not coming. All right, there's a time of peace and there's a time of war. We're in a time of war, man. We're coming into a time of judgment. Like I said, Yahweh Shemal Shai, he's getting ready to bring some serious pain and misery 
on this earth, but more so here in America. All right, because the fear of Yahweh Shemel Shai is going to be established throughout the earth with the destruction of America. The plagues that's going to be uh, 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 put on this place. All right. You see, we're getting ready to see a level of wrath that has never been shown before, man. Yahweh Shemel Shai is going to open up a uh, 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 hell. Uh, uh, the Lord's going to open up a, a level of destruction. He's going to bring calamities upon America that has never been that has never been seen before, man. You see, and again, this is the Lord A. You know, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get this in Second Ezra, because you see, when this time comes, when this time period comes, right? You know, everyone's in this in a, in a, for the most part a merry hearted spirit. Like I said, even though this word has been going out for many, many years, man, over three decades, almost four decades, this word has been going out. The warnings have been going out, right? So really, people can't, you know, when that time comes, people can't say they didn't know. That's not going to be an excuse in that day. Because this word has been going out since the 50s, the 60s, man. These warnings have been going out. So when this time comes and Yahweh Bashim Shai unleashes all hell on this earth, Right? You see, people are going to be scrambling, scrambling around trying to figure out what's going on. People are going to be trying to, uh, uh, you know, figure out why, why is this happening? Right? Because everyone is still, especially these Americans, they still in this in this uh, 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 normalcy bias type spirit where they, you know, they really do think that think, things are going to get back to normal. And I just read in Jeremiah 28, hey, we're not here to, you know, Again, this is not in the plans of Yahweh Bashim al Shai. Alright? When I hear the peace, to preach peace to you people, peace is not coming to America. Alright? Peace is not coming to America. Alright? It's going to be hell on all sides, man. Right? So when this time comes, hey, you know, nobody can say that they didn't know. Because we've been telling you. We've been telling you. As a matter of fact, the Lord has been telling you, man. You see? Because, hey, you know, how about Shemal Shai? He brings these different... Judgment goes out every day. All right? You know? And, and a lot of times when judgment goes forth, a lot of the credit goes to Satan, the spiritual demon Satan. A lot of credit goes to, to Esau and, you know, his technology. All right? But when, when judgment ramps up out here and, and things become abnormally unnormal because there's going to be a lot of things a lot of unexplainable things that's going to be taking place a lot of supernatural things that's going to be taking place to where people are going to have no choice but to acknowledge this is of a higher power man this is of Yahweh Bashim Shai right and again in that day that's what people are going to be trying to you know scrambling for answers trying to figure out what's going on well, you know, what What are we supposed to do? All these questions, right, which this is the time now to be inquiring. This is the time now to be seeking Yahweh Bashim Shai and, you know, being found in his good grace, getting on the Lord's good side. Because in that time, it ain't going to be no mercy, man. In that time, the Lord ain't going to be doing no talking, man. All right, it's not going to be no mercy shown to the wicked. To Esau, to two-thirds. Of you Israelites, all right, all you people outside of the elect, the Lord, when that time comes, it's going to be too late. You see, because hey, again, the Lord is a long suffering power man, he, he's very patient. You see, but eventually, the Lord's patience is going to run out. Eventually, the Lord's patience is going to run out. All right, this grace period is rapidly coming to an end. All right. Because we're not going to be talking to you people for too much longer. You know, you think that we're going to be out here on the highways and byways forever, man. You're sadly mistaken. Eventually, the Lord's going to say, that's it. And again, like I quoted, that's when they're going to acknowledge that, hey, these guys, they were right. You know, and when you go out on the, in those street corners, you know, trying to look for those guys that you were talking shit about, you all laughing at, you, you scoffed at. Right? 
You know, you, you caught the cops on, you tried to pick a fight. You see, those are going to be the same guys you're going to be running to, but they're not going to be out here, man. We're, again, we're not going to be out here forever, man. We're not going to be out here forever. So again, this is the time now to be inquiring. This is the A. This is the time now to be asking your questions, man. You know, um, let me get this in uh, Second Edges. Second Edges. I'm going to start at verse 18. It says the beginning, I'm sorry, Second Edges 16 and 18. The beginning of sorrows and great mornings. Right? Because, hey, the scriptures say, prepare lamentation. All right? Prepare lamentation. All right? Because that's all you people, you, you people are, are, are going to be sadly disappointed. Because, again, you're still thinking that America's going to bounce back, things are going to get better. Right? And with that being said, you know, you, you people are putting all your, your energy all your emotion, everything, you're basically putting all your chips betting against Yahweh Bashim Shai and putting all your chips in Esau in America. Well, again, you're going to be sadly disappointed, man. You're going to be very disappointed. All right? Because America, this economy, this society is on its way out. This society is on its way out. You know, as the elder Apostle Tahar recently touched on uh, 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 he, he went in to the black horse, you know, he mentioned that we're basically in the beginning stages of the black horse, man, all right, because, hey, gas prices are going up, and they're only going to continue to go up, don't be surprised, come this summer, you know, we're paying $6 for gas, man, don't be surprised, all right, and don't be surprised, you know, the summer comes, and if the gas is $6, it goes up to ten dollars, man. It goes up to twelve dollars. Don't be surprised, man. Don't be surprised. You see, inflation is going to continue to go through a roof. It's going to continue to go through the roof. All right. Matter of fact, because pretty much, pretty much, man. Um. Like I said, this society is on its way out of here, man. You, you people that think that America's going to bounce back, things going to get better, you're going to, you're, you're going to be sadly disappointed. All right, you're sadly mistaken. All right. Because it's only going to get more and more tougher. You see, the the, the more the gas goes up, the gas prices go up. Hey, man, people are going to say to hell with that, man. They're just going to stop going to work. All right? People are going to, you know, stop traveling. They, they, they're going to just, just say to hell with work. Right? You know, we're going to see more and more of these uh these uh, uh tent cities. Right? More and more people are going to be on the streets. More people are going to end up being homeless. Right? I mean, you know, the tension. It's just a combination of things, man. Tension. You know, the, 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 the tension is in the air. You, you, I mean, you can damn nearly cut it with a butter knife, man. All the tension that's in the air. Tension is on the rise. Tension is at an all-time high. These people, are, you know, you can see it in their expression, man. You can see it in their faces. People are becoming more and more fed up, you know. And these people, they're getting ready to lose it, man. These people are getting ready to lose it. America is one big mental health asylum. And these Americans, they're just, you know, like... Mental health patients that have been off their meds, man. Right? And, you know, a mental health patient that's been off his meds for some time, listen. You know, speaking from experience, I've worked in mental health. All right? You know? And, and seeing these people off their meds, man, hey, man. Because those are nothing but demons, man. All right? Those are nothing but demons. When, when, when you know, you, you see a mental health patient off his meds, all right? Those are nothing but demons, man. You know, but that's what's like enough to these Americans. They, you know, they're like, 
um, mental health patients off their meds, and eventually they're going to lose it. They're going to lose it, man. This is why we're going to need the spirit of Yahweh Bashima Shah to really be with us, man, because, you know, hey, you know, the, you just had another mass shooting in Oklahoma. I, I believe it was at a hospital, right? You had one at the supermarket, right? With the, with the, um, out there in a, a, a Buffalo, the one in Texas at a school, right? You see, hey, pretty much, because the times that we're coming into, nowhere's gonna be safe, man. Nowhere's gonna be safe. Schools, hospitals, nowhere's gonna be safe. This is why we're gonna need that hedge of protection, man. Because any, any, anywhere we go, in those times to come, man, anywhere we go could be your last destination. It could be your, your final stop, man. So we're going to need the spirit of Yahweh Shema Shah to navigate us, man, to, to direct us. All right? Because it's going to get bad out here, man. It's going to get bad, bad out here. But to touch on this, right, going into this black horse, in Revelation 6, you see, because the verse 4 it goes into the red horse, which is Esau, and how he's given power. Matter of fact, I'll read it. Revelation 6 and verse 4, and there went out another horse that was red, Talking about the red Hebrew Edomites, right? Because they are Hebrew Edomites, not, not Hebrew Israelites, but they are Hebrew uh, uh, Edomites, right? It says, and power was given to him that sat thereon. And, you know, when you go to the history in Genesis 25, it talks about how Esau came out red like a hairy garment, right? You see, no pigmentation in the skin, right? So this, this, this horse, which horse is symbolic for power, all right. So again, all right, talking about Esau Edom. When you read on, it says the power was given to him that sat there on to take peace on the earth, because this is what Esau's doing. A lot of these famines, all right. You know, a, a lot of the stuff of what we see going on, Yahweh Shema is using Esau, all right. Because again, you know, people give too much credit to the devil. People give too much credit to the so-called white man. All credit is to be given to Yahweh Shema Shai. Because again, this is his will. Again, a part of the gospel is understanding the Lord's will, the Heavenly Father, what His will is. And this is a part of His will. He gave power ship to Esau over the earth. And with that being said, Esau, everywhere he goes, he brings nothing but death, destruction. So all this destruction, all this confusion, all this turmoil that's going on in the earth right now, a lot of it is being orchestrated by the Heavenly Father, all right, which he's using Esau to orchestrate a lot of this, this, this turmoil, all right, because, hey, man, this earth, you know, a lot of these nations, they're in an uproar right now, man. I was just looking into how Pakistan, right, you got protests and riots going on over there now because, hey, people are fed up. But nevertheless, again, Yahweh Shema Shah, he's using Esau to stir up all this this trouble, this turmoil, you see, because power was given to him to take peace from the earth. Esau, he's creating these, 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 he's creating these, these, these situations, man. Like I said, he, he, you know, it's getting harder and harder, more difficult for us to, to live, man, to survive. You see, Esau is orchestrating a lot of this on the left hand. You got all these food processing plants being destroyed. Right? You see, farmers are being told to basically, uh, 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 um, a lot of farmers, man, a lot of farmers are end up, you know, there are a lot of them are end, ending up committing suicide because, you know, um, because pretty much, you know, they're being told to, to use certain, certain, uh, uh, uh supplies. I'm, you know, I'm just trying to keep it as PG for YouTube as possible. You know, I'm not giving out any medical information or, or, or disinformation, all right? You know, these articles, th these are articles that you can look up yourself, right? But basically, man, a lot of these farmers, man, a lot of them are committing suicide. Esau's coming into them, right? They're, they're, they're telling them not to use this anymore, but to use this. It's just more and more, the farming business is becoming more and more unprofitable. So a lot of these farmers are committing suicide. A lot of them are, you know, going out of business, right? You got different places like India. They're cutting off their, their, their wheat supply. 
you know, like I said before, a combination of all these things, man, which a lot of it is being orchestrated by Esau. All right. You know, the, the, the newest things being how they came out about how the world wheat supply can run out in, in 10 weeks. And that was roughly two weeks ago. Roughly two weeks ago, they, they came out about how the world's wheat supply could, could, could run out. You know, and there's pretty much wheat in everything that we eat, you know, because a large, a large, uh, uh, of what Americans consume, a large consumption of it, uh, a large consumption contains wheat. So let's just say the wheat supply does run out. All right. Hey, you know, this is going to cause the, uh, 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 uh prices and food to skyrocket even more you see because again you know right now we're, we're dealing with this inflation period which very quickly which to me I just say this when I you know when I speak as a man I'm, I'm speaking as a man when I say this I believe we're already in the the the, the um, beginning stages of hyperinflation I believe we're already in the beginning stages of hyperinflation all right, because reading on, again, verse 4, Revelation 6 and 4, and there went out another horse that had, and there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. Right? Because, hey, Yahweh Shema Shai is going to use Esau. All right? Because when all these things come to Babylon, death, destruction, famine, pestilence, the sword, right? Well, hey, part of that sword, part of that, the Lord's uh, judgment, he's going to uh, uh, use Esau. The Lord is going to use Esau to execute judgment on a lot of you jakes, man. You see? But it says, verse 5, And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld a, lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, Measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou heard not the oil and wine. Because pretty much, um, going into a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. All right, because basically, um, again, in, in, in that time to come, right? Because I believe a penny, uh, during the time of the Roman Empire, you know, the the, the Roman soldiers, those centurions, right? That penny goes into a a, a, a day's work of labor. All right, and you see, the time to come. Right, it's gonna basically take a day's work of labor to 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 afford a measure of wheat. Right, what it say? Uh, uh, it said a uh, uh, measure of barley for a penny, a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. Right, so it's gonna basically it's gonna take a day's work of labor. You know, just to put it in modern terms, you know, to to afford a, a, a let's say a loaf of bread. Which again, hyperinflation. You see? Like I said, speaking as a man, I think we're already in the beginning stages of hyperinflation, man. You know? But when this thing really pops off, man, hey, you know? This is going to cause these people to lose it. You know? Because again, as the, the shells, more and more, they become uh, 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 bare. But not only that, man. You know, you're going to have, not only is there going to be less food, but the they, whatever food's in the grocery stores, the, the, the prices are going to be so ridiculous. You see, hey, this is where we're going to see people just, just saying to hell with it, man. Right? And, you know, they're going to be running into these stores, man, and just, you know, looting, robbing, stealing, killing. Right? These are the times I've been coming into, man. And as a matter of fact... When you read down, it says, And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast saying, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and him 
and his name that sat on him was death. And hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. All right. Again, more so talking about America, the fourth part of the earth. All right. Talking about America. It says to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. So you see. All right. Again, Yahweh Bashim Shai, he's stirring all this up, using Esau, eat him on the left hand, right? You know, and this pale horse, you know, if I'm not mistaken, it lines up with, with precepts and chapters like like uh, 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 Second Edges 15 and 16, which I'm, you know, those will get back to it. Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 30 and 7, right? I'm going to get that real quick. Jeremiah 30 and 7. Matter of fact, Jeremiah uh, 30 and 6. It says, Ask you now and see whether a man doeth to travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. So you see, going back to this pale horse, right? You see? Again, man, we're in the beginning stages of this. You know, the black horse, you know? Uh, uh, hyperinflation, right? The cost of everything is going up. It's, it's going to be damn nearly impossible, you know, to, to, to live out here. This is why more and more, like I said, people are going to say the hell with the jobs, man. People are going to people are going to show up for work, right? Hey, man, it's going to be a very doggy dog world out here, man. And people are, they're just going to come out here and just get it the ski mask way, man. They're just going to take from the from the next man or woman, you know, take them for what they've got because everything's going to be it's, it's, it's going to be un unaffordable, man. Food, groceries, right? The price of rent's going up, man. Everything's going up. While our wages are staying the same, right? And more and more, the value of the dollar decreases, right? Because that's really what it is, man. It's not really the price of everything going up. It's more so the value of the dollar is, is being decreased. You see, man? But yeah, man, this, this pale horse, you see, again, when there's... You know, no food on the shelves, and the price of everything is just hyperinflated. Again, what do you think? What do you think this is going to lead to? All right. Hey, man, these, these spirits are about to get activated because, like I said, you know, and I did a video not too long ago about how, hey, you can see it on the look of the, on these people, man. They're 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 getting ready to snap. These people are getting ready to snap. Like I said, mental health patients that have been off their meds for some time, man. And with that being said, hey, these people, they're getting ready to lose it. It's going to be a dog-eat-dog world out here, man. But again, as clear as obvious, evident as it is to us, those of us in the know, right? Well, hey, these people, they have no idea, man. But again, when that time comes, you're not going to be able to say you didn't know. You're not going to be able to, you're not going to, be able to say you didn't know. That's not an excuse because the Lord has been sending the warnings. The Lord has been visiting this earth. So I'm going to go back to 2nd Edges, uh, Edges 16 and verse 18. The beginning of sorrows and great mourning. So you see, hey, we're in the beginning, the beginning stages, man. We're in the beginning stages of the beginning of sorrows. Mornings, man. All right. All this joy and laughter. All these people that are in a merry heart of spirit. Your joy is soon going to be turned into mourning. Like I quoted, prepare our lamentation. All right. Get ready, man, because, hey, you know, little by little, Yahweh Shem Shai, he's stripping the murk of this place. With the little distractions that these people do have, right, well, eventually, you're going to be faced with reality. Eventually, you're not going to have no distractions. You're not going to have nothing to comfort you. You're going to be faced with reality. And you're just going to have to deal with it, man, because these people, they're still plugged into the matrix. These people, they're still plugged into the matrix. Thinking everything is all sweet, everything is all good, right? Little do these people know. But reading on, it says the beginning of famine. So again, you know, some of the things that I, I, I mentioned, these these food processing plants being destroyed. A lot of these farmers are going out of business. You know, you got these cyber attacks. Supposedly, they're you know, a lot of these are um, uh, attacking the um, agriculture sector. Which that's gonna, you know, you know, uh, 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 further bring on a famine, right? 
For those that didn't know, you, you got a cyber tax happening to certain agriculture. You know, um, I forgot the latest one. Um, but nevertheless, it is more so attacking the agriculture sector, which, like I said, is going to further further the famines. It's going to further bring in the famines. You know, not to mention what we've been talking about with the whole, you know, all these cargo ships being, you know, uh, held off. You know, a lot of these, these it, it came out, a lot of these uh, food trucks that, you know, deliver food to the, um, the grocery stores was, you know, like I said, it came out about how a lot of these these uh, these guys, these, uh, some of these truck di truck drivers have been coming out about how, um, you know, they've been delivering these 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 trucks, hauling these foods off to different locations in the mountains, different you know places. Again, I try to keep it PG for YouTube, right? Because I mean, these these super rich elites, they know what's getting ready to happen. Because again. As I read, hey, how about Shemel Shai? He's using Esau to orchestrate a lot of these things. So Esau and these super rich elites, they know what's getting ready to happen. So this is why a lot of these food trucks, they've been hauling some of this food off, these goods, to these different secret locations in the mountains and whatnot, because they know. Because for the most part, they're the, they're the ones that's, that's causing all these things to happen. You see? But hey, know the Famine, we're in the beginning stages of famine. All right, like I said, man, hey, more and more, the shelves are going to become more and more bare. The shelves are going to become more and more empty. It says, in great death, you see, great death, right? As I read in Revelation 6, man, right? And in fact, I read it one more time. Going into that pale horse, because hey, you know, during this time, man, hey, I mentioned in, a, in another video about how, you know, these fake and phony Christians, they talk about how they don't deal with the Old Testament because the God of the Old Testament, he was too, he was too vengeful, he was too bloody. But hey, these people don't understand that the same God that you're talking about in the New Testament, he, was, he requires more blood than... More blood than he did in the Old Testament. So there's going to be a lot of bloodshed out here, man. Because we're currently living, we're in the New Testament. We're living in the New Testament. When I say that, I don't mean the covenant, all right? We're not in the New Covenant. But we're in, the, we're currently living in the New Testament. All right? And the Lord requires more blood than he did in the Old Testament. So what are you people talking about? So there's going to be bloodshed, hey, all throughout. Very soon, seeing dead bodies in the street, that's going to be a very common thing. That's going to be a very normal thing. To see a dead body, dead bodies in the streets. That's gonna be very common. Cause I remember a video I, I did probably sometime last year about how a lot of our cemeteries are, are basically they're running. They're uh, these cemeteries. They're running out of space, man, to bury these dead bodies. Right? They're running out of space. You know? And hey, <laughs> like I said, you think that was bad? Well, you just wait. Cause hey, the whole all the streets, you know, all the streets of America is going to be, so America is basically going to be one big cemetery. It's, like I said, there's going to be there's dead bodies everywhere. All right. Seeing dead bodies is going to be a regular thing, man. That's going to be, that's going to be a normal thing. You know, and you can just imagine the stench because the stench off of one dead body alone, you know, it can be, you know, hey, it can be pretty, pretty intense. Well, just imagine, imagine hundreds of bodies in the streets, man. The stench that's going to be in the air. You see? Which that leads, that leads to different diseases, right? Pestilences, right? Revelation 6 and um, verse 8 again. And I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth because again these plagues are going to be taking place throughout the four corners of the earth but more so here in America this the fourth part of the earth more so talking about America all right it says to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth so you see there's gonna be a lot of bloodshed out here we're in the beginning stages man all right and talking about these uh rolling blackouts right no, you're gonna have 
a lot, you know, a lot of people dying of heat strokes. A lot of the elderly, especially, dying of heat strokes, man. You see, again, rolling blackouts in the summer, hey, you know. Again, the crime is gonna shoot through the roof. Because, you know, if there's no electricity, then how are you gonna, you know, cook your food? How are you gonna cook your meals? Everything in your fridge is gonna go bad. Everything in the freezer is gonna go bad, right? A lot of that food's gonna go, uh, get spoiled. Because, you know, the American diet, man, they, they, you know, is shit. You know, for the most part, these, these people, they rely on fast food. You know, the, a lot of these people, they don't know how to boil an egg, man. You know, you know, a lot of these people, they, they, they rely on the, the, these, uh, uh, what do you call it? These, um, um, processed foods, these, these, uh, frozen dinners and whatnot. Well, all that's going to go bad, man. All that's going to go bad. So what are you going to do? You see? So rolling blackouts, you know, one thing's going to lead to another, man. And again, crime is going to shoot through the roof. Right? Because again, people are going to just revert to getting it the ski mask way. All right? Friends shall be, become foes, man. Neighbors are going to turn on one another. All right? Again, hey, we're in a time of war, man. All right? And in, in, during the time of war, anything goes. It's, it's pretty much every man for himself. You see? And the scriptures talk about how, hey, man, you know, people are not going to have pity towards their neighbor. You know, so you see, man, again, as clear, as obvious, as evident as it is to us, right, these people are still under this, this, this false illusion that America's going to get, America's going to bounce back. Things are going to get back to quote unquote normal. But all the tall tale signs are there. All right. So back in second, it's just 16 verse 18. Again, the beginning of sorrows. And great mornings, the beginning of famine, and great death, the beginning of wars. You see, and hey, you know, uh, uh, this whole thing with Russia and the Ukraine, right? Which you know, the West is blaming, um, the, the the inflation and the you know, gas going up and all these other things. They're blaming. They're trying to use Russia and the Ukraine as a scapegoat, basically. Which, you know, that has nothing to do with, for the most part, because for one thing, with the gas gas prices going up, right, well, and they're blaming it on Russia and the Ukraine, right, you know, listen, man, America has enough oil reserves to last themselves hundreds of years, you see, the whole crisis that's going on with the oil, it has nothing to do with it what's going on in Russia and the Ukraine. So you see, they're just using that, right? Just like they did with the whole C-19 demic, you know? Because again, the truth of the matter is America's been on its way out. This place has been failing. This place has been on its way out, okay? But they're just using these scapegoats, all right? And throwing these distractions to keep you people distracted, right? You just had this uh, whole Johnny Depp case Right? You know, which that was nothing but a distraction. And now that's over with. Well, what's, you gotta ask, what's, what's gonna be the next distraction? What's gonna be the new thing? What's gonna be the new thing? Because while that whole trial thing was going on, and as it ended, you had another so called mass shooting take place. You see? So what's gonna be the new distraction? Because again, these plagues are here. And they're not, they're not, it's not, it's not going anywhere. Again, we've been trying to tell you people, it's only gonna get worse out here. It's only going to get worse. America is going to be, you think it's bad in Sri Lanka? You think it's bad in Afghanistan and all these other places, right? Hey, America's going to get it the worst, right? You think Ukraine is bad, right? Wait, hey, America's going to be the Ukraine times 10 because America's going to be one big war zone. As, in Fred, as I read, the beginning of wars, you see? America's going to be turned into one big war zone. Especially when the martial law troops come over here, the blue hats come over here, the UN troops come over here. You see, you're going to have all type of shootouts taking place. Right? And that's not an including fact, like I said, people are going to be taking, you know, taking what the next man's got. All right? You know, as it tells you in the second, as it's 15, man, hey, swords in their hand. 
right? Hey, people are going to start taking matters into their own hands. All right? Taking the next man for what he's got. Taking his resources. Again, it's not going to be no pity. So it's not going to matter if you, you know, you got a, 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 a wife and children, a newborn baby. Hey, all that, it's not going to mean nothing in that time. It's not going to mean nothing in that day. You know? You know, I watched that movie that brothers have been talking about called um, American Blackout. Right? You know? And in that movie, you had a... Um, you had a, a guy with his family, right? A man with his family. You know, supposedly they were, they were basically they were ready for for a lifestyle situation. You know, they were basically they were preppers, right? So when this time came, all right, and it was lights out. Hey, you know, um, you you had, uh, I, I guess it was a neighbor, basically come up asking for food, and the follower he wasn't with it. The pops he wasn't with it. All right, because hey, you know, when it comes down to it, hey, you gotta worry about yourself. You gotta worry about yourself, man. Now, granted, during that time, you know, hey, when all hell's breaking loose, now, you know, it's not, it's not to say, because you know, for the mo for the most part, some of us are gonna be on our own, some uh, be, be up by ourselves. Some of us, you know, might be with our wives and children, might be separated from our wives and children. But hey, some brothers are gonna be amongst each other, man. Some brothers may actually be with each other, right? And the wisdom is going to be amongst brothers on how to, you know, uh, uh, to ration food and, and you know, uh, uh, to ration food and whatnot. You see? So when I say, and, you know, it's more so you got to worry about yourself. It's not to say if you're amongst brothers that you got to, you know, just take everything for yourself. That's not what I'm saying. All right? But, hey, you know, outside of that, yeah, man, you, you know, you got to worry about yourself and pretty much... The, the, the pops, man, that was, that was pretty much his mindset. Because pretty much he knew and understood that, hey, you give out food and supplies to this guy, then more people are going to, you know, come up asking for, for a handout, you see? And that takes away from, 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 from the people that matter in your circle, you see? So the pops, again, he, he basically, he wasn't with it, you know? Basically, he turned the guy away, and he told him, hey, remember that. He told him, he told him, remember that. You know, and he walked off. Well, hey, later on in the movie, hey, the guy came back. More people came out, uh, showed up, you know. And hey, man, they was about to take that. They, they was about to put them put them to death. But I did a video on this as well. All right. Because, you know, in the movie, you had a so-called happy ending, right? Where, you know, the lights came back on, you know. But hey, in this movie of the Lord, there's no happy ending. Not for all you outside of the elect. There's not going to be no happy ending. All right? So, situa situations like that where, hey, if you're not of the elect, then, hey, you know, people come up, you know, these preppers, these so-called preppers, right? And you got people come up to you and they're getting ready to blow you away. All right? Hey, man, judgment is going to be executed. You know, and it's, hey, and this is what people fail to understand. When it comes to Yahweh Basham Shai, listen, again, all those outside of the elect, all right. Hey, again, through death by pain. So you see, it's nothing for the Lord to put the spirit. You know, if your whole family's held at gunpoint, it's nothing for the Lord to put the spirit on those people to take you, to take the whole family out, man. Because again, in this movie of the Heavenly Father, it's no, it, there is no happy ending outside of the elect. There's no happy ending. You see. So reading on in Second Edges sixteen and eighteen, reading on. It says, and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? So, hey, we're at the beginning of evils. All right? The beginning of bad times, man. We're coming into extremely bad times, extreme difficult times, man. And again, and you know, because this is something that I've been meditating on. I was talking to my rib the other day about how, hey, listen, man, everything that we've been saying, you know, Hey, it's, it's becoming more and more surreal because, hey, we're starting to be affected by it, you know? It, it's becoming more and more surreal, man. It's, 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 you know, hey, that's why, like I said, we're going to need the spirit to be with us, man, because, hey, man, without it, we, we're not going to make it out here, man. We're not going to survive. We're not going to survive out here, man. So we need the spirit of Yahweh Shemal to be with us, 
you know, because hey, you know, we're going to live through it, man. When these things play out and these these plays come upon America, man, we're going to be here. We're going to witness these things. We're going we're gonna, to, a lot of us are going to see judgment get played out, man. And this is why, hey, man, we're going to have to have a strong stomach. You, you see, man, this is why Yahabah Shemal Shai, he's been, he's been, he's been training us up, man. Because in that day, you're going to have to have a cold, a, a cold heart, man, a, a cold spirit to be able to withstand what we're going to be seeing, what we're going to be witnessing. Because it's not going to be easy, man. You know, it's not going to be easy. And like I said, just more and more, it's becoming more and more surreal. Like, hey, this this is getting ready to come down, man. It's, it's getting ready to happen. But hey, man, now's not the time to bitch up about it, man. Now this is this ain't, this ain't the time to, to you know, uh, 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 be afraid, man. No, man, let's just, you know, let's get through it, man. Let's get through this last hoorah, man. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Shai. This ain't the time to bitch up, man. You know? So, um, this is the beginning of evil. The beginning of evils, man. The beginning of bad times. So, reading on in verse 19, it says, Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for an amendment. So, you see, again, Yahabashmosha, he's been sent in the warnings. Alright? The reproof, the correction. Alright. You know, hey, the Lord's been speaking, man. You know, he's been skinning, sending the scorches, man. Hey, get right. He's been sending the jab shots, man. Get right. Again, you wanna uh uh, uh escape these 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 sin perils, man. Get right. Get right with me. Because again, when, when, when that time comes, hey, how about Shimon Shai? To all those outside of the elect, the Lord is not sparing. All right? You see, right now, the Lord is pleading with his people to get right, man. The Lord is pleading. The Lord is pleading with his people to get right. But, you know, Jake, they, they slapped their hand away. They don't want to get right. So, all the, 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 the destruction that's getting ready to come to this place, how about Shimon Shai? He's allowing you. He's allowing you people, and he's allowing this place to reach the 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 the, the top of your wickedness, so that when he does bring the destruction, he's going to be just justified. You see, because hey, again, what's getting ready to happen is going to be like it's never been since the earth was created. But the Lord, he's he's going to be justified in doing so. Again, the Lord, he's long, he's very patient. Our Lord, man, the Lord is very long suffering. You see, and he does that so that by the time judgment does come, he's gonna it, it just the, the the judgment is justified. Because you see, slavery, you know, and everything that we've been through as a nation of people throughout time, as bad as it may seem, all right. Because you know, when you look at these different time periods, and you know, when our people were catching hell, right. You know, it was justified. The Lord was justified and, and, and the calamities that he brought upon our people. Because when you look at our history, how wicked our people were, you know, again, the Lord was justified. Well, hey, this is the last generation, right? Matter of fact,
Matthew chapter 24. No, that's not it. Basically, Yahweh he talked about a particular generation, right? Which this also goes into reincarnation. All right, because hey, the same wicked individuals that were back during the time of Yahweh Shai, as well as the disciples that followed Yahweh Shai over 2,000 years ago, and the Lord brought them back. All right, because like I said, this also going into uh, uh, going into um, reincarnation. Because hey, not only does the Lord bring spirits back individually, but He bring whole generations back. All right, and you see, a lot of those uh, wicked Israelites that were back then, they're back. A lot of them are back today. All right, and that's why you see guys like this 14 year old kid that fell off, you know, this ride some time ago, right? Hey, he could have been one of those wicked Israelites back then, you know, during the time of Yahweh shot, you know, some of those uh, kids that got shot up in that school in Texas, they could have been some of those wicked Israelites back then, you see? So the Lord has brought these spirits back, all right, because again, we're in the time now where. How about Shemal Shai? This is, we're coming into the time of the final judgment. The final judgment. Because how about Shemal Shai is not going to keep, you know, bringing us on the earth, killing us off, and then bringing us back. No, man. All right? And this is the generation where this this, this cycle stops. This is the generation where this cycle stops. It, it, it ends with this generation. So with that being said, the wicked generation... Again, they're back and they're here to receive their final judgment through death by pain, okay? So, um, I'm going to just go ahead and read this in Luke chapter 9. I'll, start, I'll read verse 27. It says, But I tell you of truth, there be some of these, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of the Most High, till they see the kingdom of Yahweh Hashem Shai. So again, because going into reincarnation, clearly, though the disciples, um, you know, there's no one on earth right now that's over 2,000 years ago. That's over 2,000 years old. You see, so clearly, the disciples that Yahweh Shai was talking to then, all right, they're back today. You see, because he said there were there will be some of you which shall not taste of death till the kingdom come. All right. So the same disciples that were then, that were back then during that time, they're back today. All right, and they're going to see the salvation of Yahweh Shai, man. They're going to see the second coming of Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. All right. But hey, the wicked too, they're going to see the, the, the second coming of Yahweh Shai, but it's not going to be to their pleasure. It's not going to be to their benefit. All right? Just real quick. Real quick. 
quick. No, that's not either. Um, yeah, it's on the tip of my tongue. But I can't see the... Well, I'll read this. I'll read this. In Matthew 23, this is like, it's, like I read, all right? Yahweh told the disciples back then that some of them, they wouldn't taste death until the kingdom come, right? Until Yahweh comes. And again, clearly, no one's on the earth over 2,000 years old, man, all right? So clearly, those, those, those disciples, they're back today. All right, but again, as well as the wicked, all right, and they're back today to receive their judgment. You see, so I'm gonna read this in uh, Matthew 23. Um, I'm gonna start at verse 30, Matthew 23 and 30, and say, If we had been in the days of our fathers, we would have not been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. That's another thing, you know. In past lives, you had certain Israelites, all right, you know, uh, uh, kill the prophets, you know. And hey, those of you who have touched the prophets in times past, you're back today to receive your judgment, all right. It says, Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. So they're back today. All right. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Because yeah, you know, hey, you people, hey, you got to get it, man. You wicked two-thirds, you got to get it. And again, this is the time where you're going to receive your judgment. We're coming into the time of the final judgment. The final judgment. Let that sink in. All right, this is the Lord's final judgment. You see, and with that being said, hey amen. You know, you think everything that took place before was bad. Listen, all that combined together, it's not going to be nothing compared to the time that we're coming into, man. The final judgment is again, the Lord is getting ready to unleash a level of wrath and destruction that has never been since the earth was created. All right. Uh, the Lord's getting ready to uh, uh, unleash a level of wrath on the earth. That has never been seen since the earth was created. Verse 34. Wherefore, behold, I send you, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall you scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. Yeah, because hey, you know, you know, that time to come, man, hey, you know. A lot of you Israelites, hey, you know, you, you Jakes, man, you know. See when it's all said and done out here, hey, and this is the, the, the beautiful thing about it is because again, a lot of you were able to put hands on the prophets in times past. But hey, this time, Lord's will, man, this is gonna be the time where hey, brothers are gonna be getting brothers are gonna get that spiritual power, man, and that standard is gonna be lifted. Alright, because hey, you know, two-thirds of you Jakes, man, you 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 fight for Esau and his kingdom. You see. You stand with Esau and you fight for his kingdom. So the fact that we're out here telling you that Esau's kingdom is coming to an end, you know, being that Jake is a homeborn slave, all right, the fact that we, we, we speak against Esau and we speak against his kingdom, two thirds, you have a problem. You have a problem with that. You see, and hey, you know, hey, in that time to come, hey, you know, you're going to have Jake, because in that time, this is going to be a time where. You know, the Israelites are going to be persecuted. You know, uh, uh, those of us in the truth, we're going to be persecuted. We're going to be hunted. Some of us are going to be locked up. 
brought before judges, right? You know, they're going to demonize us, right? You see, hey, Jacob's going to be looking to get their hand on us, man. You know, even two-thirds of our own people are going to be looking to get, to put hands on us. You see, well, like I said, this is the time where, hey, you know, the Lord is going to lift up that standard. The brothers are going to be getting that spiritual power. All right, and how about Shemar Shah is going to, he's going to give brothers the spirit to, to, to defend themselves, man. All right. Because, hey, you know, brothers have never, have never fought in a day in their life, right? When a bunch of two-third wicked jakes try to come up against them, hey, out of nowhere, that brother, he's going to, he's going to, he's going to know martial law, all right? The Lord's going to program, and, it's, and it's, you know, he's going, to, he's going to program to program him to be able to, 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 you know, take them all out. Like that one scene off of, um, it was either It Man 1 or It Man 2, I think it was It Man 1, right? We had it man, he uh um um you know took down all those 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 uh, uh karate kids at once. You see? He took down like 20 of them at the you know at the same time, like it was nothing. Well hey, brothers are gonna be doing that. Like I said, brothers that never fought in our life, right? Well hey, out of nowhere, they're gonna be they're gonna be kicking ass, man. You see stuff like that, hey, on the behalf of the elect, that standard's gonna be lifted, man. Because you, you, you wicked Israelites, you're not going to be able to, 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 to continue to put your hands on the prophets. You see, once you touch the Lord's anointed, that's where you cross the line for two-thirds and for Esau, Edom, and for the nations. All right? Once you put your hands on the anointed, that's where, you know, hey, that's where all bets are off, man. You see? And then we look forward to it because, hey, Lord's world would be up that number, hey. You know, that's why we encourage Esau. Let him do what he's got to do. You know, come with your martial law, man. Come, come, come with it. Because we know, we believe, Yahabash Yerabashai, he's going to fight for us. He's going to stand up for us. You see? But this is why we, hey, bring it on, man. Y'all do what y'all got to do. Esau, you wicked two-thirds, y'all do what y'all got to do, man. You know? Hey, we're not scared, man. We're not scared. We're not afraid, man. Not of you. Because you can only do what the Heavenly Father allows you to do. You can only do what He sanctions you to do. And the worst thing that you can do is take our life. Alright? But after that, you can't do anything else. You know? The worst thing you can do is take our life. You know? And hey, man, if we have to die in this world, hey, that's really a, uh, that's really a blessing. That's really a blessing. You know? Because any place is better than this place. I'd rather be in the spiritual room than, than to be here. You know, I'd rather be in the spiritual realm than, than, than to be here. You see? So, hey, you know, this this is the, 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 the comfort of the scriptures, man. Knowing that death is not the end-all be-all, right? Death is not the end-all be-all. You know, for those that get martyred in this truth, hey, you know, consider yourself lucky, man. Because, hey, you got a crown of righteousness waiting for you. You know, some of the elect are going to get martyred. Some of the elect are going to get beheaded. But hey, the angels are right there waiting to deliver you up to the Heavenly Father with a crown, man. For those that are martyred for this truth. For those that are martyred for the testimony of Yahweh Shemar Shai. Because some of the elect are going to get uh, 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 so called put to death on the, you know, when, when Jacob's trouble breaks forth, when all hell breaks loose. Alright? But that's the difference. Dying a righteous death, dying for Yahweh Shemar Shai, and dying in two thirds. A two-third death. That's that's the two are, uh, are completely different. They're completely different. So you see, if you're gonna die, at least you know die for your house by shy. All right, because you know, hey, there's nothing you know more pleasing. The scriptures say how the Lord, uh, um, for someone to die for your house by shy, that's very honorable in the eyes of your house by shy, man. That's very honorable in the eyes of the heavenly Father. You know, so hey, man, don't even trip. You know, don't even trip, man. But verse 35, Matthew 23 and 35, it says that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. From the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barcaius, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. So you see, hey, this is... This generation, this is this is the generation that's going to receive 
All right. When when these things get played out, and, 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 and you know, judgment gets played out. All right. This is the this is the time, and this is the generation that's going to receive that judgment. The judgment, the final judgment. All right. And it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be pretty at all. Because again, the same righteous, uh, the, 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 the same spirits, the same disciples that were back during the time of Yahweh Shai, they're back today. And the same wicked spirits that were back during the time of Yahweh Shai, they're back today. Contrary to what these fake and phony Christians teach, all right? There's a such thing as recar a reincarnation, regeneration. And again, not only does the Lord bring spirits back individually, but he brings whole generations back, all right? So you have whole generations, the righteous and the wicked, all right, they're back today to receive their judgment and to, uh, you know, uh, uh, one group of people, they're going to see the second coming of who they ignorantly really call Jesus, right? Because contrary to proper belief, a so-called white man with long stringy hair and blue eyes, he's not coming to save everyone, all right? That's why the scriptures say, hey, when that time comes, the second coming of who they call Jesus, which his name is Yahweh Shai, all right. When that time comes, hey, it's gonna to be to their to their amazement. It's gonna to be to their really to their shame. Matter of fact, let me get it. The wisdom of Solomon. And this is why we stand boldly in Yahweh Shai. All right. All right. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter five, verse one. It says, "Then shall the righteous stand in great boldness." Before the face of such as have afflicted him and made an account of his labors. Because you see, the things that what we preach, what we believe in, alright, from the from 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 the perspective of these people, alright, what we believe in, alright, according to the scriptures, it's crazy. Alright? What we believe in is crazy. It sounds crazy. You know? But hey, nevertheless, this is why we stand. Boldly, we, we we stand boldly in what we believe in, man. All right. Now, with that being said, hey, again, as I quoted, you know, then shall they know a prophet had been among them. Then they're gonna know that what we've been saying. And th those guys, they're not crazy. You see, when these things start playing out, especially the second coming of who they call Jesus, and when the earth earth gets invaded by millions and millions of angels, right? You see, like I said, the things that we teach, the earth is going to get invaded by so-called UFOs, all right? And in those so-called UFOs, angelic beings, all right? That's what's coming to invade this earth with Yahweh Shai, which is a so-called black man leading the charge. You see, the things that we preach from the perspective of a non-believer, it sounds crazy. It sounds crazy. You see? But hey. Do we let do we let the unfaith of these people affect us? No, we don't. Because as the scriptures say, these people, they're going to die in their unbelief. So your faith doesn't your unbelief doesn't affect us. Because that's another thing, understanding the will of the Heavenly Father. Right? We all have our parts to play. Alright? And you got those that were uh, created to play the law of the righteous and to be saved you got the lot of those that were created to be the wicked and to be condemned to not make it you see so in reality man you can't you know when it comes to a scoffer when it comes to an unbeliever when it comes to a two-third you really you can't get mad at them because they're just playing their lot they're just playing their role you see we're all playing our lot man we're all playing our part we're just hoping that a you know, because they're wearing the truth, you know. And with that being said, you know, it's not a guaranteed spot because many Jakes come into this truth and leave, end up falling out, you know. But the fact being that, hey, we're in the truth, we're on a good, we're on the right track, right? We're on the right track. If we're in the truth, we're in the right track. But it's the thing of, hey, Lord's will enduring until the end because only those that endure until the end are going to make it. And that's what it's about, enduring until the end. So if we're in the truth, then we just, hey, Yahweh Bashem Shai, Lord's will, we continue to rock this thing out until the chair has come. All right? Because again, what we believe and what we teach, 
the fact that this earth is going to be inv invaded by millions and millions and millions of so-called what they call UFOs, but those are really the chariots, all right? And in those so-called UFOs are angelic beings, which are so-called black men, and those, those are our brothers, believe it or not. Those are our brothers. Those are the saints in the spiritual realm, while we're the saints on the earth, all right? You see? So we have to endure until we see those, until we see our salvation, them, them chariots, you see? And when you read on, it says, when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. So you see, all right, because contrary to, again, what these people believe, the so-called white man is coming back to save everyone, right? No, man. Again, we're telling you, a so-called black man, he's, he's coming to invade this earth with millions and millions and millions of so-called UFOs, and in those so-called UFOs, angelic beings, all right? And I always say they're coming to do two things. They're coming to seek and destroy. They're coming to seek out the elect and destroy everything else. All right? That's what the angels, when they come and this earth gets invaded, that's what they're coming to do. They're coming to, 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 to get the elect and to, 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 hey, wreak havoc on everything else. Because, hey, Yahweh Shai, he's coming with fire. He's coming with vengeance. All right? You see? So when this time comes, all right, to to those of you that don't believe, it's going to be to your disappointment, right? You're going to be sad and mistaken. You see, I'm going to read it again. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. Because the second coming of who you call Jesus, it wasn't what you thought it to be. And like I said, hey, the hell with it because, hey, we tried to tell you what the deal is. We tried to tell you what the deal is, man. We tried to warn you what it is. It says, and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they look for. And again, what do they look for? A so-called white man with long stringy hair and blue eyes coming to give hugs and kisses to everyone. You see? But the fact is, hey, Yahweh Shah, a so-called black man, he's coming with, with fierce, he's coming with a force, he's coming with a vengeance that the earth has never seen before. All right? And it's going to be to your amazement. Right? Like, damn, these, well, what these, these, these are those, Right? Like, these are the people that, that, these are the lost people, right? Those guys that you talk shit about on the corners, the street corners, wearing potato sack cloths, right? Wearing the, the, the potato sacks, wearing the dresses, right? These are the guys that are getting saved? Well, you're damn right, because, again, understanding the Lord's will, you see, Yahweh Bashim Shai, he can easily call someone like a LeBron James. He can easily use someone like a LeBron James. Right? He can easily use someone like a Kendrick, a Kendrick Lamar. He can easily use someone like a like an Oprah to bring forth his truth. But that'd be too easy. You see, Yahabah Shemar Bashar, he calls the lowly. Alright? Because hey, this story of ours, man, it's the greatest underdog story of ever told. Because no one's looking forward to us, you know. No, no, no one's, you know, looking, looking. Like it, like I said, I'm gonna read it again. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. And shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. Because, again, when we get saved out of here, again, it's not going to be to these people to, to, to you know, to, to, oh, matter of fact, it said beyond all that they look for. Because, again, they look for a so-called white man with long stringy hair and blue eyes to crack forth through the clouds and to save everyone. Oh, man, that's what you people look for. All right. But through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shema Shah, we know what it is. We know what the deal is. You see, so that's why when this earth gets invaded, about what they call UFOs, all right? And it's no coincidence, ever since the so-called pandemic started, it's been a record number of these so-called UFO sightings. And guess what country on the earth has the most so-called UFO sightings? It's America, because this place is about to get judged. To the Amos, man, Amos the ninth chapter, how the eyes of the Lord power are upon the sinful kingdom. You see, because this is the most wicked, all right? This is the most wicked that the earth has ever been, all right? And pretty much who's led the charge? It's been America. So you see, there's no coincidence that America has the most, the most so-called UFO sightings is because this place is about to get judged. But not only that, hey, our deliverance. Because again, them chariots, when them chariots come, that means our deliverance. That's our salvation. You see? And we look forward to it. Unlike what these people, what they look for, what they seek after, is going to be to their, to their, to their dis, their displeasure. 
All right, it's going to be to their shame. All right, it's not going to be for their benefit because again, contrary to Papa belief, the second coming of who they call, who these people, who they call Jesus, a so-called white man is not coming to save everyone. All right. So you see, man, hey, that day is going to be a day of people dropping dead just at the sight of this, man. People are going to be dropping dead just at the sight of this. Just witnessing these things, man. People are going to be dropping dead. Because, hey, man, the Lord is not coming back to play. He's not coming back to play games with you people, man. He's not coming back to play hopscotch with you people, man. The Lord has a chip on his shoulders. He has a chip on his shoulders, man. And the Lord's going to show out. Yahweh Shem Shai is going to act out. All right, because um, there's a scripture. Matter of fact, well, let me see if it's in this chapter real quick. Let's see if it's in this chapter. It's the same chapter. I think it's in the same book. See if I can find this. Because, like I said before, you people, you got all your chips bet against Yahweh Bashimah Shai and his word and what he said, right? That's, that's that's the worst mistake that you could do, man. Betting against how about Shimao Shai? Damn, I can't find that precept, man, but, um, and I don't want to misquote it, you know, Lord's will comes back to me, and I'll probably do a separate video on it, but, again, the fact that these people, they have all their chips on Esau, or so, you know, they, they're, 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 they're all in with Esau, and they bet against the how about Shemar Rashad, which, again, that's the worst mistake you can make, that's the worst bet that you can make. All right. Um, so yeah, you know, like I said, the strangeness of his salvation, right? See, man, and hey, the scriptures talk about how the Lord will work a, a work in our day that we won't believe. You know, roughly paraphrasing, right? Because, it, like I said, hey, this is the greatest underdog story of all time. We're we're the least desirable nation. All right, and again. All odds are bet against us. All odds are stacked against us. You see, well, hey, like I said, the Lord can easily call a, call a LeBron James, right? Because, hey, if the Lord called a LeBron James into this truth, then, hey, Jake will, Jake will wake up by the thousands. 
All right. Jake will wake up by the thousand, but that's not how the Lord operates. He deals with the the the, the, the lowly. All right. So to say, the nobodies. Because again, no one's you know, no one's betting you know, no one's no one's uh uh uh. uh Bent with us, man. No one, you know. Again, all odds are stacked against us. But that's how the Lord. That's how the Lord operates. All right. You know, He always got the the, the the underdog. Like I said, this is the greatest underdog story ever told. You see, man. So it's gonna it's gonna be even that more sweeter when this thing plays out. All right, and this thing come to pass and seeing the look of terror on the faces of these people, man. You know, like I said, they 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 talk this shit now. You know, they want to take their pictures now, right? You know, they want to make mockery of us now. They want to make a, a spectacle out of us now. That's okay, because the Lord has you people marked. You people who want to take your pictures, you want to flash your pictures. But well, hey, the angel is, is, is right there taking your picture, all right? The angel's right there taking your picture, man. You see, so hey, you know, the Lord has it out for you people, and you don't even know it. And that's a scary thing. That's a very scary thing. This is why... Listen, man, we, we walk on eggshells. When it comes to this truth, the more we grow, the more careful we are in our walk, man. You know, hey, you know, because understanding that, hey, that could be us, man. You know, we, we don't know if, if we're all the elect. The Lord could take us out at any moment and being just, he'll be justified in doing so. He'll be justified in doing so. So, you know, we tread carefully, man. And that's the fear, man. All right. Because this place, it teaches you to be, matter of fact, let me get this. Because as, as I quoted earlier, you know, hey, two-thirds of our people, they have the spirit of, uh, of Esau. Right? And Esau, he promotes number wickedness. He promotes number wickedness. So that's the vibration that two-thirds of our people, Right? They're just complete contrary to your Hababash and Ramashai. So I'm going to read this in uh, 2 Thessalonians. Verse 2, 2 Thessalonians 2, I'll start at verse 1. It says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shahamashiach, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not first, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as the day of Hamashiach is at hand. Now, how much more now, all right, being that this was written over 2,000 years ago, all right, how much closer are we to the end now? And like I said, man, it said that you be not soon shaken in mind, nor be troubled. But like I said, man, just, just meditating and how, hey, everything that we've been saying, man, starting with the apostles, man, hey, we're coming into those times, man, and more and more, it's becoming surreal. Like, yeah, man, we're, we're about to go through this, you know? And it's time to gird down laws like a man. Like I said, this is not the time to, you know, bitch out or anything like that, man. This is the time now to gird up down laws like a man. You see, it's, it's going to take a certain spirit. When all hell is breaking loose out here, and it's calamity, and it's just, it's just death and destruction, the, the, the elect, they're gonna, they're, they're, their head is going to be on their shoulders. The elect, they're going to be straight. As a matter of fact, the elect, they're going to be laughing at, laughing at your people. When they're catching hell, Right? When the Lord brings the calamities on this earth, and even more so here in America, the elect, they're going to be laughing at you people. And it's going to take a certain spirit to be able to do that. You see? But more and more, we're coming into that time, man. You know? It's, 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 it's about to get real out here, man. You know? We're, 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 we're all about to feel that. We're all about to feel the squeeze. We're all about to feel the pinch. You know? Because again, there's no, no pre-rapture before the tribulation. No, man, we have, we're going to be here. We're going to be tried and we're going to be tested. Our faith is going to be tested to the max. You see? But fret not. All right? Because, hey, the Lord, he's been He's been building us up to put our faith in him. He's been building our faith up, all right, to trust in him. Because when it's all said and done, 
and we don't have nothing, when we lose everything, you know, what are we going to do? Who are we going to go to? And Yahweh Hashem Shah, he's been showing us like, look, look, I'm the one. All right. Who fed, fed us 40 years in the wilderness, man? You know, who's, who's delivered us out of the hand of all our enemies, all the heathens that came up against us? All right. Who performed all these works, man? It was the Lord. You see, the Lord has always been there. You see, man? And again, now more so in these times, you see, we got the examples to learn from. Romans 5, uh, Romans 15, right? Things are written four times, written for our learning. We got the examples to learn from. All right? You see? But now it's time to utilize. It's, it's time to utilize these tools, man. Everything that we've been, the Lord has been showing us in our personal walk. All right? Because it's more, it's what it's, it's one thing to just, you know, say you believe. All right? Well, you know, it's another thing. You're putting it in a position. You're putting a situation to where you have to utilize faith. You have to utilize integrity. All right? You have to utilize these, these, these tools. You know? And again, hey, the Lord has been showing us the whole time, like, listen, I'm, I'm there for you, man. I, I'm here. Just trust me. You know? The Lord is constantly be showing, that, showing us that. Just trust me. Don't worry about anything else. Don't worry about the intricate details of how this is going to be played out. How things are going to get played out. All right? You see, because when it comes to fear, man, you know, matter of fact, where's that at? You know, you, you, you thinking ahead about something that's not in your control. Listen, man. You know, you, you, you're you bugging yourself out. You'll bug yourself out. You know? You, you, you got to worry about certain bills that are coming up, right? You know, certain bills coming up, you don't know how you're going to pay it off. But listen, let me, let me get this. Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 17, verse 12. It says, For fear is nothing else but a betraying of the succors which reason offer it. So you see, basically, when it, when it comes down to it, that fear, when I talk about the fear of Yahweh Hashem Rabbi Shai, all right, but that, that fear, oh, Esau, if I don't take the karagma, you know, whatever, you know, he's threatening, whatever, all right? But basically, man, that fear is, is, is not more, more so than the, the, the you're basically your mind playing tricks on itself, man. You're worrying about things that's not in your control, right? Things that you can't you can't control, man. Again, this is why you how about your mouth shy. He's been showing us, listen, don't worry about the intricate details. Just trust me. Don't worry about anything else. Just trust me. You see? Because you know, this stuff, you know, like I said, the things that you know we deal with in our daily lives, man, you know, it, 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 like the saying saying in the world, man, it, it, uh, um, what's that what's that saying? Um, um it's all psychological, man. It's all psychological. You're worrying about things that is not in your control, right? You see, man, and again, we just need to, like another saying in the world, let go and let God, right? That's what they say in the world. Let go and let God, right? And it's easier said than done, but hey, you know, again, don't worry about the intricate details. The script is going to how if we do what we're supposed to do, all right, then hey, Yahab Hashem Shai, he's gonna take care of everything else, man. If we're doing what we're supposed to do, Yahab Hashem Shai, he's gonna make sure we're straight. You know? Hey, look at Esau, man. Esau, he lives good, man. Esau lives carefree. Esau doesn't have a, a, a worry. He doesn't have to worry about anything. Look at the blessing that Esau, look at the blessing that the Lord gave Esau. And this is the people that the Lord can't stand. Right? Well, hey, how much more to the righteous, to the saints, and more so those of us trying to do the right thing, sincerity, to the best of our ability. You see, because hey, the Lord, he gives us just enough of what we need because for one, we can't have too much because hey, you know, America, this is not our rest. This is not the time for us to be established, right? America was set up as a punishment for you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, all right? America's not more... 
than a punishment. It's been nothing more than a punishment for us. So it wasn't meant for us to be established here. You see? But nevertheless, hey, the Lord gives us just enough to get by day to day. He gives us just, he gives us just, just what we need. But even with that being said, because these guys like LeBron James and, you know, the, the, the rich of our, you know, the, the, the so-called elite of our people, all right, hey, they still deal with the curses, man. Whether it's one thing or the, or the other, they still deal with the curses. So either way, you're not getting out of it. You're not getting out of this. You see? But nevertheless, hey, look at Esau. Look at the blessing that the Lord gave him. And this is a people that the Lord hates. The Lord can't stand these people. But look at their blessing. You see? So, hey, fret not, man. All right? Because, again, the Lord has been prepping us. He's been, he's been, he's been uh, uh, showing us. Again, don't worry about nothing. Just trust me. Just trust me, man. And you see, hey, some of us are to the point where, listen, man, the hell with it, you know? Whatever the Lord's will be, let the will of the Lord be. A lot of us are to that point, man. We don't, we, we don't care, man. Uh, uh, we understand, hey, when that time comes, we're going to lose loved ones, right? But like I said, we're going to see judgment. When these things play out and it gets heavy out here, we're going to see these things. We're going to see these judgments get played out. But, hey, you know? Some of that judgment is going to be enacted on our family members, certain loved ones, you know. But you see, hey, for the most part, and like I said, it's easier said than done, but, you know, we're to the point where, hey, if this is the Lord's will, so be it. Let it, you know, let it happen. Let it happen. Hey, you know, they're going to come back, man. They're going to come back. You see, again, all that to be said, don't worry about it, man. Don't worry about it. Everything on this side is going to be burnt up, all right? Everything that we forsake, everything that we lose on this side, we're going to get it back a hundredfold, man. So don't worry about it, you see? Don't worry about it. This is why, we listen, we're, we're ready, hey, we're ready to risk it all. We're ready to lose it all, man. The hell with this, the hell with this place, man. The hell with this place. You see? But, um, back in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there, come on, fall away, falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. And if this man isn't Esau, Edom today, then who is it? Who is he, man? Who is it? Who is the son of perdition? Who is that man of sin to be revealed if it's not Esau, Edom? Just look at his track record. Right? That's why when you read verse 4, it says, Who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God, and or that is worshipped, so that he is as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So you see, he said, Who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God. So you see, again, everything that Esau is about, everything that he represents, everything that he pushes, is in opposition to the Heavenly Father. See, and this is what he promotes. Opposition of the Heavenly Father, man. And this is the spirit that our two-thirds of our people, this is the spirit that they got on them, man. Opposition to the Heavenly Father. So, again, don't be surprised, man, when, you know, two-thirds of our own people, they look at us as the enemy because they have the spirit of Esau, Edom. Complete opposition to the Heavenly Father. You know? You know, man? Hey, Yahweh Shai. He was hated in his own country, right? He was hated in his own country. To the point where, hey, they tried to seek, they tried, they tried to take Yahweh Shai out, man. So, you know, you call yourself a disciple of Yahweh Shai, expect the same results. Expect the same treatment. See, but again, this is the generation that, hey, you people, you two thirds, you're gonna have to pay. You're gonna have to pay, man. So we're coming into that time of judgment, all right? You know, seek Yahweh Bashem while he may be found, repent, and be converted, all right? Come back to your power, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, 
Native American Indians, come back to you. Come back to the source. You know, hey, Pops is calling us home, man. He, he's calling us home, man. You know, we've been exile. We've been in exile for for a while, but hey, it's time to come home. So hopefully this was edifying. All praise to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Break a thumb to the hopefully elect. Rose one until next time. Shalom.